subscribe this channel by pressing this button for being updated from biomedical and healthcare society hello guys welcome back to the channel this is chapter 3 biopotential electrodes from the lecture series biosensors and transducers so without any further delay let's get started In this chapter, we will study about the biopotential electrodes and its use in the biomed sensors and transducers. The agenda for this chapter having the introduction of this biopotential electrodes, electrode theory, polarizable and non-polarizable electrodes types of biopotential electrodes ecg electrode emg electrode eeg electrode glucose strip pregnancy strip all these topics are included in this chapter now the introduction of this Interference between the body and the electronic measuring apparatus to measure and record potential. Biopotential electrodes conduct current across interface between body and the electronic measuring circuit as other potential measurement device too. Electrode carries out a transducing function because current is carried in the body by ions, whereas it is carried in the electrode and its lead wire by electrons. Electrode serve as a transducer to change an ionic current into an electronic current. Electrode have electrical characteristic and can be modeled with equivalent circuit based on its characteristic. Biopotential It is an electric potential that is measured between points in living cells tissues and organisms and which accompanies all biochemical processes. It describes the transfer of information between and within cells. Resting membrane potential or resting potential. It is the electric potential of a neuron or other excitable cell relative to its surrounding when not stimulated that is in the rest condition or involved in passage of an impulse. The resting membrane potential of a neuron is about minus 70 millivolt. This means that the inside of the neuron is 70 millivolt less than the outside. At rest condition, there are relatively more sodium ions outside the neuron and more potassium ions inside that neuron. RMP that is resting membrane potential is a product of the distribution of charged particles that is the ions there are numerous number of ions in the cells positively charged ions called cations example sodium that is Na plus ion potassium ion that is a K plus ion magnesium ion that is Mg2 plus ion calcium ion that is Ca2 plus ion and negatively charged ion called as anions Example Cl minus ion and protein that act as ion. 
we have the two figures over here the left figure is showing you the cell membrane with positive charge outside and negative charge inside connected to a voltage source of minus 70 millivolt and right side is showing you the ions present or we can say the cell present inside and outside view inside we have a minus ion k plus ion cl minus ion na plus ion and outside of this cell we are having k plus ion cl minus ion and na plus ion Action potential It is a change in electric potential associated with the passage of an impulse along with the membrane of a muscle cell or nerve cell. The maximum value of action potential is generally 30 millivolt. The action potential is an explosion of electrical activity that is created by a depolarizing current. This means that some events that is the presence of stimulus which is caused by the help of stimulus causing the resting potential to move towards the 0 millivolt that is from 30 millivolt towards the 0 millivolt. When the depolarization reaches out minus 55 millivolt a neuron will fire an action potential that is known as the threshold we have two figures over here left figure is about the cell and the action potential you can clearly see sodium ion is going inside the cell and potassium ion is trying to come outside the cell we can see the numbers of sodium ion is more as compared to the number of potassium ion in the cell on the right side of the image we can see the depolarization cell during the action potential which means that the negative charge of the ions is more accumulated outside the cell wall as compared to the inside part of the cell that is the positive ion present over there and the voltage accumulated from those cell movement at the action potential is 20 millivolt propagation of action potential the action potential generated at the action hillock propagates as a wave along the action the current flowing inward at the point on the axon during an action potential spread out along the axon and depolarize the adjacent section of this membrane. The currents flowing inward at a point on the axon during an action potential spread out along with the axon and depolarize the adjacent section of its membrane. The absolute refractory period keeps the direction of propagation unidirectional. Neurons send message electrochemically. This means that chemical procedure involves with the electrical signal. The important ions in the nervous system are sodium and potassium. Both have plus one charge that is a positive one charge. Calcium has positive two charge and chloride has negative one charge. As sodium ions are more on the outside and inside of the neuron is negative relative to the outside sodium ions rush into the neurons when the potassium channel opens potassium rushes out of the cell reversing the depolarization
a cell in the resting state is called polarized the process of changing from the resting state to the action state is called depolarization and the process of returning back to the resting state is called repolarization during the process of repolarization sodium pump pushes three sodium ions quickly out of the cell from every two potassium ions it into following the generation of action potential there is a small gap within which the cell cannot respond to any new stimulus and this period is called the absolute refractory period which lasts for about 1 millisecond beyond this point is the relative refractory period when cells do not do respond but the stimulus needs is much stronger and this may last for several milliseconds measurement methods which are based on biopotential are ecg that is electrocardiogram eeg electroencephalogram emg electromyogram eog electrocardiogram vcg vibrothyram and several others we have three figures over here very first figure is showing you the bioelectric potential in this you can clearly see by the implementation of the stimulus depolarization is happening and this graph is going to the peak of plus 30 millivolt at the intermediate level of the action potential and after that repolarization is happening and the graph is coming back towards the minus 70 level of the millivolt of the action potential over there it is giving you the hyperpolarization state and after that hyperpolarization state it is going to the resting potential from the action potential it is moving towards the resting potential the middle figure is showing you the biopotential electrode interference equivalent circuit the last figure is showing you the biopotential measurement with two electrodes equivalent circuit synaptic transmission synaptic transmission is the process by which signaling molecules called neurotransmitters are released by a neuron that is the presynaptic neuron and bind to the activate the receptors of another neuron that is the postsynaptic neuron Neurotransmission is essential for the process of communication between two neurons. Synaptic transmission relies on the availability of the neurotransmitter the release of the neurotransmitter by exocytosis the binding of the post synaptic receptor by the neurotransmitter the functional response of the post synaptic cell the subsequent removal of or we can say the deactivation of the neurotransmitter all these parameters are present on which the synaptic transmission is dependent when the action potential reaches the end of the axon and axon terminal it creates membranous sacs called as vesicles to move towards the membrane of the action terminal the member membrane of the vesicle fuses with the membrane of the action terminal enabling the vesicle to release its contents into the synaptic space 
when a nerve impulse reaches the synapse at the end of the neuron it cannot pass directly to the next one instead it triggers the neuron to release a chemical neurotransmitter the neurotransmitter drifts across the gap between the two neurons There are three ways in which neurotransmitter is deactivated. Very first is reuptake, second one is the enzymatic degradation, third one is the diffusion. Reuptake or we can say the reabsorption, re-enter of the neurotransmitter into the neuron through channel in the membrane. In the enzymatic degradation, this is to be the destruction of the neurotransmitter into a substance which has no effect on the receptor channel with special chemicals called enzymes. In the diffusion state, the neurotransmitter becomes and deattached from the receptor and drifting out from the synaptic cleft. Over here we have two figures, one is about the structure of chemical synapse, second one is also the same. In this we can clearly see the axon terminal, synaptic cleft and dendrite. The neurotransmitter is being uh, uh, added into the synaptic cleft service, uh, axon terminal, over there voltage gated Ca++ ions is being present and the synaptic vessels is causing the neurotransmitter to reuptake the pump through the receptor to become the postsynaptic density in the dendrite side through the synaptic cell membrane. Same scenario and same phenomena we can clearly see on the right side of the image under the structure of a chemical synapse. Bioelectrodes Bioelectrodes function as an interface between biological substances and electronic system. Electrical activity within the biological structure is either sensed or stimulated. The electrical system are either passively sensing that is measuring or actively stimulating including electrical potentials within the biological structures on your unit. Bioelectric potential generated in our body are ionic potentials and it is necessary to convert these ions potential into electronic potential before they can be measured by conventional methods. Device that converts ionic potential into electronic potential are called electrodes. A transducer that converts the bio D ionic current into the body traditional electricon current flowing in the electrode is to be known as bioelectrodes. The ability to conduct small current across the interface between the body and the electronic measuring circuit under the oxidation is dominant when the current flow is from electron electrode to electrolyte and reduction dominates when the current flow is in the opposite direction that is from the electrolyte towards the electrode. The net current that crosses the interface passing from the electrode 
to electrolyte consists of electrons moving in the direction opposite to that of the current in the electrode cations moving in the same direction anions prefers to move in the direction opposite to that of the current in electrolytes over here we are having two diagrams in this first diagram we can see the electron flow that is towards the that is away from the electrode and right side of the image we have seen the ion flow positively charged ion is going away from the electrolyte and negatively charged ion is coming towards the uh, electrolyte <coughs> and current flow we can see the directions towards the right right side of the image we are having signal ecg signal eg signal eog signal emg signal with their frequency respective frequency range and amplitude range that is for ecg we are having 0.01 200 hertz with having the amplitude of 0.05 millivolt to 3 millivolt or eeg signal we are having the frequency range from 0.1 to 80 hertz and the amplitude range is from the 0.001 millivolt to 1 millivolt parallelly if you see about the eeg signal we are having the frequency range starts from the 0.01 hertz up to 10 hertz and the amplitude range for the same thing is 0.01 001 millivolt till 0.3 millivolt for the emg signal we are having the frequency range starts from 50 hertz till 3000 hertz and the amplitude start from 0.01 millivolt till 100 millivolt some properties of bioelectrodes it should be a good conductor it should have low impedance it should not polarize when a current flows through them it should stabilize a good contact with the body and cause no motion effect should not cause itching swelling or discomfort to the patient the metal which is been used on the bioelectrodes it should not be toxic in nature it should be mechanically rubbed and above all it should be easy to clean electrode skin tissue interface interface between body and electronic measuring device conducts current across the interface iron carry current in the body electrodes are capable of changing iron current into electronic current that is termed as electrode to the electrolyte and electro electrode to the tissue interface over here we are having two diagrams left one is showing you the tissue from the signal from the tissue towards the electrolyte skin interface after that transmitted to electrolyte then further transmitted to metal electrolyte interface and to the instrument and on the right side of the image we are having again the same thing over there we are having one example of the skin tissue interface very first we are having the dermis and subcutaneous layer of skin above that we have epidermis layer over there the grid is added and electrolyte electrode is been implemented on the gel half cell potential the potential difference that is caused by the ability of electrons to flow from one half cell to another electrons 
are able to move between electrode as the chemical reaction is a redox reaction half cell potential is altered when there is current flowing in the electrode due to the electrode polarization when the metal comes in contact with solution the electrolyte surrounds the metal is at different electric potential from the rest of the solution a second electrode is required to find half cell potential hydrogen half cell potential is determined by the metal involved in it concentration of its ions in solution and temperature next equation in context of half cell potential because it governs the half cell potential when two ionic solution of different concentration are separated by semi permeable membrane and electric potential exist across the membrane in the equation shown over here e is equals to minus rt by nf ln a1 upon a2 over here a1 and a2 are the ionic activity of the ions on each side of the membrane ionic activity is the availability of an ionic species in solution to enter into a reaction polarization normally standard half cell potential e not is an equilibrium value and assumes zero current across the interface when current flows the half cell potential e not changes over potential vp difference between non current zero current and zero current half cell potential are also known as the polarization potential ohmic over potential vr due to the resistance of the electrolyte voltage drop along the pathway of the ionic flow is known as the ohmic potential vr concentration over potential vc due to a redistribution of the ions in the vicinity of the electrode electrolyte interface that is the concentration changes over there this concentration over potential occurs that is vc activation over potential va due to metal ions going into solution that must overcome an energy barrier for the activation energy or due to metal plating out of solution onto the electrode mechanism contributed to over potential ohmic over potential voltage drop along the path of the current and current changes resistance of electrolyte and thus a voltage drop does not follow ohmic law concentration over potential changes the distribution of ion at the electrode electrolyte interface activation over potential current changes the rate of oxidation and reduction since the activation energy barriers of oxidation and reduction are different the net activation energy depends on the direction of current and its difference appears as a voltage so voltage over potential vp is equals to vr plus vc plus va
polarizable and non polarizable electrodes polarizable electrodes they are perfectly polarizable electrodes in which no actual charge crosses the electrode electrolyte interface when a current is applied the current across the interface is a displacement current and the electrode behaves like a capacitor over potential occurs is due to the presence of concentration example platinum electrode perfectly non polarizable electrodes it is a type of electrodes in which current passes freely across the electrode electrolyte interface it requires no energy to make the transition these electrodes see no over potential example silver silver chloride electrode motion artifact blurring of a radiographic image produced by respiratory muscular or other movement of the patient when polarizable electrode is in contact with an electrolyte a double layer of charge forms at the interface movement of the electrode will disturb the distribution of the charge and results in momentary change in the half cell potential until equilibrium is reached again motion artifact is less minimum for non polarizable electrodes signal due to motion has low frequency so it can be filtered out when measuring a biological signal of high frequency component such as electromyogram or action on action potential however for electrocardiogram electroencephalogram and electroculogram whose frequency are low it is recommended to use non polarizable electrodes to avoid signals due to motion artifact types of biopotential electrodes in this we have having the three major types and as per those three major types we have their sub types very first we are having the micro electrodes second one is has the surface electrode or skin body surface electrodes third one we are having a needle electrode in the very first category of micro electrodes we are having metallic and non metallic types that is metal micro electrode and non metallic micro electrode non metallic micro electrodes is also known as the micro pipette in surface electrodes or we can say skin elect body surface electrodes there are some categories in that category very first we are having the immersion electrode second one is the plate electrode or metal plate electrode third one is the suction cup electrode fourth one is the floating electrode fifth one is the spray on electrode and the last one we up uh, with the special electrode and disposable electrode very first we going to see about the micro electrode micro electrodes are electrodes that with tips sufficiently small to penetrate a single cell in order to obtain reading from within the cell the tip must be small enough to permit penetration without damaging the cell 
This action is usually complicated by the difficulty of accurately positioning of an electrode with respect to a cell. Two types are present metal microelectrode and micropipette that is the non metallic microelectrode. This is the schematic diagram of metal microelectrode. We can see over here we have the cell positive charge accumulated outside the cell under which we have nuclear cytoplasm cell membrane. This metallic microelectrode is having metal rod insulation with the tissue fluid that is been inserted in the cell having the outside limit of A R that is a, R is the reference electrode and A is the metal rod electrode that is comes in the category of metallic electrode. This is the schematic diagram of non-metallic electrode or we can say this is the micro pipette electrode. In this we can clearly see we have one the reference electrode that is the R and A is our non-metallic electrode which is having the glass from outside under which we have a stem electrolyte in micro pipette which added we have the layer of CD tape CD tapper and this is being inserted on over the cell above the cell membrane as we can clearly see the positive charge is accumulated outside the cell under which the cell we are having the cytoplasm nucleus this is how the micro pipette electrode looks like surface electrode or skin body surface electrode surface electrode measures the potential available from the skin surface to the skin body surface electrodes are of many size and types it senses the signal from heart brain and nerves any surface electrode can be used to sense ecg that is electrocardiogram eeg electroencephalogram emg electromyogram etc larger surface electrode senses the ecg signal that is electrocardiogram signal that is the electrical activity of the heart Smaller surface electrode senses the EMG and EEG signals that is electromyogram muscular activity and EEG that is the electroencephalogram the brain activity. Types of surface electrodes or skin body surface electrodes includes immersion electrode, plate electrode or metal plate electrode suction cup electrodes floating electrodes spray on electrodes disposable electrodes some special electrodes are also present for ear clip electrode or we can say for eeg that is electroencephalograph scalp surface electrode these are the some types of Biopotential elect surface electrodes. Very first in that category, we will gonna see about the immersion electrode. Immersion electrode in this schematic diagram, we can clearly see a individual is there who has put his leg into the bucket kind of thing. Over there, a solution is there and that is connected to the machine and as per the movement of the muscular activity and the tissue activity of the potential agenda on the up to the muscular level there will be the change in the electrolyte activity in the solution and as per that it is being measured through the immersion electrode and that comes in that category of immersion electrode These immersion electrodes nowadays no commonly used 
for the detection and measurement as the kind of biopotential electrode. Next we are going to see about the plate electrode or metal plate electrode. As the schematic diagram is showing you, we have the contact surface added with the rubber pad support on the lead wire terminal, the lead wire has been added which is further transmit the signal towards the machine. This metal plate electrode is directly placed on the patient over application of the gel so that the signal from the body comes to the metal plate electrode and further transmitted to the machine and we can be able to measure the signal which is coming out from the patient's body. So this was the plate electrodes or metal plate electrode. Suction cup electrode. This under comes under the category of ECG electrodes. In ECG electrode we are using the two types of electrodes. Very first and very traditional is the suction cup electrode. In this diagram we can see we are having a contact surface. We are having a lead buyer and we are having a squeezable rubber bulb. So we are implementing the gel on the patient's body at the various positions as we know that electrocardiogram is measured at the with the 12 leads and at the position of 12 leads the gel is been implemented and after the implementation of gel this con squeezable rubber bulb is been squeezed and the contact surface electrode is been placed on the targeted position where the gel is applied and the suction cup will act as a suction and over there we will be able to pick up the signal from that particular position through the suction cup electrodes. This is the very traditional and very accurate measurement for this uh, uh, ECG uh, measurement and but it has a lot of artific artifacts involved into it. Apart from that we are having the surface electrodes which has also been one of the ECG electrode and that is most commonly used out there. In electrode types, we are having this one again the floating electrodes. So these floating electrodes are kind of one of the type of contact electrode only in which we are having a strip kind of thing that is being added on the surface of the body of the individual from where the signal is being picked up. In the left diagram we can see the clearly how electrode is being added with the wire and how it looks like. On the right side of the diagram we can clearly see how the strip is being added and how it can be plitched up. The best part of using this electrode, we can just slide the position of the electrode wherever we want to add the and pick the signal from that position. If you see the diagram of a floating type skin surface electrode in which on the skin surface the space of the electrode wherever its position is present the gel is being applied and this gel above this gel this electrode is been placed and after that this left right movement of this electrode this uh, this electrode will take its position particular position on that particular individual part of the area where the signal is been picked up and above this we can see the silver silver chloride disc which is been directly connected to the lead wire and above that the plastic and or we can say the rubber support is been uh, given to have the proper positioning to the support the electrode.
EEG electrode in that this special electrode category this EEG electrode is also coming in that we are having seeing the two categories that is the ear clip electrode and another one is the EEG scalp surface electrode very first in this uh, diagram we can see the ear clip electrode that is a clip kind of thing is being made which have the two electrodes from the front side and the, from the back side that is been added on the ear tip okay pinna side and that electrode will pick up the signal from that particular part and transmit to the machine another one we are having the eeg scalp surface electrode in which what's happening it's also a type of contact type electrode on which we are adding this electrode on the scalp the point is there should not be any interface of the hair on the scalp otherwise the hair impedance will also be added to the electrode and which further acts as a positioning error and which will give the artifacts in the signal readability and the signal will not be able to properly picked from the particular point so this scalp electrode is a have to be properly positioned on the head for the proper pickup of the eeg signal this is the schematic diagram of ear clip electrode you can clearly see how this clip kind of thing is been manufactured and uh, this clip is been added on the ear clip and and properly when signal is picked up from the ear tips or we get spinna side on below side of the ear and that signal is transmitted further to the instrument the second electrode which is very commonly used in the eeg measurement that's the electroencephalograph measurement is a needle electrode and this is the much more efficient electrode as compared to the surface electrode that which we are using before for the measurement of the eeg that is the scalp electrode this needle electrode is much more accurate and much more useful as we can see in this diagram the needle is there there will be the marking on the head been made by the physician with the help of the scale and that as per that scale marking this needle will be inserted on the scalp of that patient and from that scalp the signal will be picked up to the electrode and transmitted to the machine and further analyzation will happen on the machine side in this schematic diagram we can clearly see how the needle electrode is been implemented on the scalp of the patient we can clearly see over here the cap kind of thing is been added with the positioning of the various electrodes and over there the needle electrode is been placing on the head of the patient and this is a little bit painful procedure as compared to any other electrode method measure for use for the measurement of the signal from the human body EMG electrode In this schematic diagram we can see the EMG needle electrode how it is been the needle electrode been formed you can see the grasp grip gripper like structure is been made on the tip of the needle electrode to for picking up the better signals from the tissues on the, the muscle so these electrodes are basically used in the electromyogram also as we have seen in this type of electrodes been used for the measurement of EEG signal parallelly so in EMG basically they are preferring to insert these electrodes inside the muscle for the proper measurement of the signal which given comes in the forms of stimulus while having any kind of muscular movement either stress or strain and that signal is picked up by this needle electrode and transmitted by to the amplifier for amplification purpose in the instrument and further for the analysis in the instrument blood glucose test strip the blood glucose test strip or diabetic test strip are a key component of the blood glucose testing these small disposable strips of plastic can look insignificant but they provide a very important role in 
aiding people with diabetes to control and monitor their diabetes in the vast majority cases a diabetes testing machine will take on type of testing strip only there are many blood glucose strips available out there which gives you the proper measurement with the test of ketone levels and ketone strips available out there for the measurement of diabetes basically diabetes uh, is a group of metabolic disorder which is characterized by a high blood sugar level over a prolonged period of time and that symptom includes uh, basically we all know about that because commonly it is uh, most of the people are commonly <clears throat> symptomed with the symptoms of blood pressure and diabetes in nowadays in our home the symptom includes often the frequent urination increased thirst and increased appetite if left untreated diabetes can cause may health complications acute complication can cause the diabetic ketoacidosis hypersomolac sir hypoglycemic state or death so diabetes is due to the like cause per pancreas is not producing enough insulin or the cells of the body not responding properly to the insulin produced so basically diabetes are having their main th- three types type 1 type 2 and gestational diabetes type 1 diabetes results from the failure of the pancreas to produce enough insulin due to loss of beta cells this form was previously referred to the insulin dependent diabetes mellitus the loss of beta cell can cause by an autoimmune response this <coughs> autoimmune response is totally unknown till now and in the type 2 diabetes begins with the insulin resistance a condition in which cell fails to respond to insulin property as the disease progresses a lack of insulin may also develop this form was previously referred to non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus the commonly it is a commonly a combination of excessive body weight and insufficient exercise and the gestational diabetes is the third main form and occurs when the pregnant woman without a previous study of the diabetes develop high sugar level type 1 and type 2 diabetes and gestational diabetes or can be measured by the help of glucose test strip and by the regular testing with the diabetes test strip it is important part of the successful diabetes management when the blood is placed on the test strip it reacts with a chemical glucose oxidase producing gluconic acid from glucose in the blood at the other end of the test strip the meter transfers a current to the test strip the test strip has electrical terminal that allows the meter to measure the current between terminal in the below diagram we can see the various company test strips of blood glucose are present the current between the terminals changes depending on the level of gluconic acid that has been produced the blood glucose meter then utilizes an algorithm to act out the blood glucose level based upon the different in current some blood glucose test strips allows reapplication of more blood to same test strip if needed during the test the amount of blood requires by a test strip can vary between the manufacturers generally between 0.4 microliter to 1 microliter of the blood is required this all go- goes with the invasive method of blood glucose me- measurement basically blood glucose measurement comes with the two methods very first is the invasive one and the second one is the non invasive one in invasive method we have to prick the blood out that we are doing in for this glucose test strips because we need a drop of blood at least a drop of blood from the glucose measurement but in the non invasive method we can do without having the blood 
taken out from the body we can do by the various parameters there help of various parameters we can test it nowadays still the research is going on for the non invasive method basically they are proposing the methods for the measurement of the blood glucose without having the blood into it either from the set or from the skin tissue interface pregnancy test strips pregnant in pregnancy test is used to determine whether a woman is pregnant or not there are basically two primary methods that are used for testing the pregnancy hormone that is hcg human chronic chondrotropin that is the hcg which present in the blood or urine and comes with this other one method is the scanning with the ultrasonography testing blood with hcg results in the earliest detection of pregnancy almost all pregnant women will have a positive urine pregnancy test one week after the first day of a missed menstruation period the hcg is the human chronic gonadotropin hormone for that test of the pregnancy there is a test strip made by the various companies like cassette we can say it the test strip can be said as a cassette it is a rapid chromatographic immunoassay for the quantity qualitative detection of human chronic gonadotropin that is hcg in urine or serum to aid in the early detection of pregnancy these pregnancy test are specially designed for professional users doctors clinician family planning centers for determination of early pregnancy <clears throat> but also have found a place in home pregnancy testing application due to ease of use and low cost the specificity of 98% meaning that test is highly selective to for the hcg glycoprotein The test uses two lines to indicate results. This test is conducted by immersing the test strip in a urine or serum specimen and observing the formation of colored lines. The specimen migrates via capillary action along the membrane to react with the colored conjugate positive specimen reacts with the specific antibody that is hcg colored conjugate to form a colored line to the test strip line region of the membrane absence of this colored line suggests a negative result pregnancy test by the midstream device it is commonly used for home pregnancy testing you can apply the pregnancy midstream directly into the urine stream so there is no need for the urine collection the accuracy of this pregnancy test is 99.6% it has a built in quality control very high sensitivity we can see this diagram which is showing you the pregnancy test strips The another method for the measurement of this pregnancy test we can go with the ultrasound known as the obstetric ultrasonography which is may be used for the detect the diagnosis of the pregnancy. It is very common to have a positive at home urine pregnancy test before an ultrasound. Both abdominal and vaginal ultrasound may be used but vaginal ultrasound allows for earlier visualization of the pregnancy. With obstetric Ultrasonography the gestational sac that is the intrauterine fluid collection can be visualized at 4.25 to 5 weeks gestation the yolk sac at 5 to 6 week gestation and fetal pole at 5.5 to 6 week gestation ultrasound is used for multiple gestation 
as we have seen that there can be the false result pregnancy test by using of this one this press strip it can include some reasons like there can be the error in performing and interpreting the test there can be the biochemical pregnancy that is a loss of pregnancy before signs of pregnancy and apparent on the ultrasound like very soon after implementation also there can be the non pregnant production of the scg molecule that is secretion due to a tumor or to the pituitary gland some of the diseases like liver cancer including chlorocarnomia and other germ tumors iga deficiency hydrophil antibodies electrocytoplasts gestational transformative diseases gtd and gestational trophocytic neuroplasms these are the some diseases due to which there can be the result of the false pregnancy and bacterial contamination and the blood in urine that can also go with the false pregnancy results these are the references which is used in this slide in this chapters so you can if you want to read more about them you can go and read with this slides in this chapter we have studied about the biopotential electrode how the biopotential electrode is important how and it is we can be usable for us we have seen the electrode theory about the various electrode we have seen the polarizable and non polarizable electrodes we have seen about the types of biopotential electrodes we have seen about the ecg electrodes we have seen about the emg electrode we have seen about the eeg electrode we have seen about the glucose strip and pregnancy strip so this was all about the biopotential electrode thank you for uh, listening hope to see you in the next chapter